Welcome back everybody to another reaction video and I uh, want to get back to the epic rap battles of history and this has been the most suggested one that I watch and I haven't seen it yet. Um, I just pulled it up a minute ago. Epic rap battles of history, Joseph Stalin versus Gregory Rasputin. So let's go ahead and dive into this one and see what it's all about. With the man on to be sorry, oh, how many dictators does it take to turn an empire into a union to ruin the state? It's a disgrace what you did to your own people. Your daddy beat you like a dog, and now you're evil. You're from Georgia, sweet Georgia, and history books unfold ya. As a messed up motherfucker bent in the mind, you're a superpower, but it paid the price. With the endless destruction of Russia's eyes, you're a man of steel, I spit kryptonite. Big dick. So. <laughs> All right, we're going to pause right there. Uh, most of what he's done so far is he's talking about Stalin. He calls him Man of Steel. Joseph Stalin's real name was not Stalin. I think it was Zhukashvili or something like that. Uh, he was from Georgia, which is you know a, is a state down there near Armenia, uh, kind of the, the southern, southwestern part of what became the Soviet Union. So he's not Russian. And so he kind of talks a little bit about all of that stuff, talks about Stalin destroying his own people and, and uh, absolutely true all of that so far and now I can see and if I didn't say it already heads up this is not family friendly um, the the size of Rasputin's manhood is something that was talked about quite a bit uh, and he was known to have been very well endowed in that department okay so I, I gotta I should have waited until the end of that verse, but he talks about a whisper to his wife because um, Rasputin's in with the uh, Russian royal family was through the uh, Tsarina. It was uh, Tsar Nicholas II's wife. Uh, and she just absolutely was smitten by Rasputin, loved him, uh, especially because Rasputin seemed to somehow have the ability to cure their son's um, hemophilia. This hemophilia was something that ran uh, in the descendants of uh, Queen Victoria, and um, their son was a descendant of Queen Victoria. It seemed to be something that got passed on to a lot of the royal families of uh, Europe, especially because of all the inbreeding and stuff that happened. And nobody knows exactly how he did that, but he apparently somehow had did something that caused uh, the Tsarevich to not. Um, suffer from hemophilia when he was around. Through my eyes, you perverted witch! See the soul of the man who made Mother Russia his bitch! You think I give a fuck about my wife? My own son got locked up in prison! Yep. And I didn't save his life! You got up easy when they pick that moose cock! I'd leave your neck in a noose in a trench and shot! Your whole family! Shot! All your wizard friends! Shot! Anyone who sold you pierogi! Shot! Starve me for days so you waste away! I even crush motherfuckers when I'm laid insane! Kind of let it so Trotsky out of the picture! Drop the hammer on you harder than I bitch slapped Hitler! I have no Okay, before apparently we listen to what Vladimir Lenin has to say, <laughs> I didn't know he was going to show up. A um, couple of things that jumped out at me that Stalin talks about. One of them is uh, his son and the fact that he didn't save him. He had a son named Yakov. I'm assuming that's Jacob in, in Russian. Uh, and Yakov was captured during World War II and died in a German prison camp. Uh, the details are kind of sketchy about what happened. The official story, I think, was that he ran into an electric fence and got electrocuted. It was also possibly committed suicide, and it was also possible that he was shot by the Germans. Uh, but those are all possibilities. And then the other thing he re uh, refers to are people being crushed during his funeral. People were in such a, a kind of a rush, the, the crowds, to go pay their respects at Stalin's funeral that that some people were crushed to death in all of that. Um, one thing while I'm thinking about it, too, that I would highly recommend, if you want something that's, that's funny and a little off color, but also kind of historically accurate in a lot of ways, the film The Death of Stalin is absolutely hilarious. Uh, Jason Isaacs playing Marshal Zhukov is so over the top. It's amazing. Um, you've got, I think Nikita Khrushchev is played by Steve Buscemi. Uh, it's just really, really well done. If you're into that sort of dark humor, it's worth your time. Let's see what Lenin has to say. No pride for you who ruined everything my revolution was doing to stop the bourgeoisie. I fought the bondage of classes, the proletariat masses that brought me here to spit a thesis against both of your eyes. Never start with you there, Frankenstein, looking like something out of R.L. Sun. It's hip-hop chowder, red of a wine. This is Oswald, I can't do shit tonight. 
you were supposed to. All right, so, and he talks, he calls him Frankenstein, and I mean, I don't know if that's just a reference to how he looks or if it's a reference to the fact that uh, there was this kind of this reputation that uh, that Rasputin just wouldn't die. The night that he was killed, uh, it started by him being given poison uh, in, in some food that he was given. The poison didn't kill him. Then they shot him, and when they th- shot him, they thought he was dead, and they took him to a river where they were going to dump him, and apparently he was still alive when he went into the river, and then he finally died either by drowning or freezing when he was in the river. But um, So maybe that's what the whole Frankenstein's about. I'm not sure. So be my right hand man! But your loyalty shriveled up like your right hand man! My whole future was bright! You let your heart grow dark! And stop the greatest revolution since the birth of Mars! So, uh, yeah, when Stalin dies, uh, or not when Stalin dies, when Lenin dies, Lenin did not want Stalin to be the guy that replaced him. He knew by that point that Stalin was not the person with whom they could trust the future of the Soviet Union. Uh, but Stalin, uh, in his position as general secretary, was able to maneuver and, and kind of do all this stuff uh, to, to get himself in position and to eliminate any of his possible threats uh, to being able to, to take over. Knock, 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 knock. Oh, now who's here? Did somebody say <laughs> Is it Gorbachev? Oh, the host with the <laughs> Assholes made a mess and the war got cold. Shook hands with both Ronalds, Reagan and McDonald's, no doubt. If your name ends with in, time to get out. Uh, so Stalin, uh, Lenin, Rasputin. And again, Lenin, just like Stalin, Lenin was not his name. Uh, I can't remember what it was, but uh, it was definitely not Lenin. Uh, it was it, another one of those things where he changed it. So Gorbachev, somebody I remember well, and I think he's still alive actually to this day. Uh, but he completely changed the future of the uh, of the Soviet Union. In fact, he kind of eventually led to their downfall um, by kind of opening things up and and starting to kind of push them toward more like what China has today, that kind of a communist government where it's a little more open to the West. And, and he and Reagan had a great relationship. Let's see what else he has to say. The ball to that Barishnikov dance player put on that wall like the Kool-Aid man. Oh, yeah. You two need yoga. You need to shower. And you all need to learn how to handle real power. Did somebody say Is that Putin? Power? Oh, my God. You want to mess with me? I speak. It's got to be it's got to be Putin cuz he's not wearing a shirt. And there's this famous thing where Putin was riding around on a horse with no shirt on, kind of showing off how manly he was. So he, he said, "Lived a half life because there have been these people who have spoken out against Stalin or against Putin that have mysteriously been poisoned with radiation." Uh, so I think that's the half life re- uh, reference there. So XKJB Putin was in the KGB, and uh, CCCP is actually the abbreviation in Russian for the Soviet Union. All right, so I guess that's the end of that one. Uh, Let me know your thoughts about that. I'm sure there's stuff I missed. I don't know my Russian history as well as I know more Western history, so I'm sure there are uh, little things that I missed. Let me know what those are in the comment section below. But let's go ahead and take a look at one more today. All right, so I decided for the second one today that we would dive into Nikola Tesla versus Thomas Edison. This one should be really interesting. Let's see what they have to say. Thomas! Step up! You'll be shocked when I spit and start static. I'll rip your style and add it to my long list of pat. While you were busy digging ditches and burning bridges, I'm pumping out some and stacking riches. So go back to your pitches. You're a geek, plagued by OCD. You never had sex, but you sure got screwed by me. I crush yeah. you, Tesla. There's just no putting it gently. I don't alternate my flow. I diss you directly. Okay, so. Uh, again, if you want to see a good movie, uh, The Current War, which stars um, Benedict Cumberbatch as Thomas Edison, is a good way to kind of dive into this topic. Um, it's also something they cover a lot on the History Channel. I think uh, The Men Who Built America um, deals with some of that as well. But, um, you know, Edison and Tesla, actually, I think Tesla worked for Edison for a while uh, and was trying to give him these suggestions. And Edison, 
Edison was a brilliant inventor. He was not a great dude. He was kind of a, a jerk. He was not kind of a jerk. He was a jerk. He, he was very ruthless when it came to business. Tesla, on the other hand, didn't seem to care so much about the business end of things. He just wanted to invent and he wanted to bring things to the world. And um, so very, very different way of dealing with things. And they talk about alternating current versus direct current there. And one of the things Edison did to prove and this is why I say he was not a good dude. He was so adamant about wanting to prove that Tesla's uh, form of electricity was dangerous that he actually helped them design the electric chair using Tesla's electricity uh, so he could show that it was deadly to people. Uh, and William Kemmler was the very first person to ever be electrocuted. I think he had murdered somebody with a hatchet. He was killed in Auburn State Prison in New York in 1890. Uh, and he basically got cooked to death because it didn't work very well. Uh, and Tesla set up, or uh, Edison set up all these other experiments where they like electrocuted an elephant to, to the public, trying to prove that his stuff was was safe and Tesla's was dangerous. The difference, of course, uh, between the two forms of electricity had to do with um, how far it could go. And Tesla's had the potential where you didn't have to have nearly as many power stations, but it was potentially more dangerous. I see a universe of infinite energy, but no potential for threat from this enemy. So you can call me Tesla, Nikola, impeccably dressed, giving lessons in electrical nemesis. This will be on the test, so confess to your deaths and let the whole world know what the Serbian did for the wizard of men. No, history is getting rewritten, and I have read your best invention was a word to steal. Correct. The truth hurts, you broke. So he calls him the wizard of Menlo. Um, Edison was known as the Wizard of Menlo Park, which is where he had his uh, lab set up in New Jersey. He's actually from Ohio, from Northwest Ohio, uh, Edison is originally. Um, I can't remember the name of the town, but I've been by it several times. And wash up, don't give a speech about your visions. If they can't make a buck, I conduct business. Understood things you never could. So dope that I even make New Jersey look good. I'm on the record, I invented. You got dupe there, I said it. Number two, fifty thousand dollars that you'll never forget it. Without me, here's a taste of what this battle would be. No one. All right, so one there I caught at the end. He said something about, I bet you fifty thousand dollars. Well, apparently, one of the things that kindly severed their relationship eventually was that um, Tesla said that Edison offered him $50,000 if he could make certain improvements to his DC power system. And Tesla f came through and was able to make the improvements and was shocked when Edison didn't give him the money. And Edison made this kind of crude uh, insult to him. And he said, well, you know, when you become a real American, you'll understand what an American joke is. And he said he was saying it in jest. He didn't really mean it. That He just didn't think Tesla would be able to do it. And, and Tesla took that personally. And I think that was kind of the thing that finally ended their relationship. And uh, Tesla stopped working for Edison. Lights, no camera, no sound. See? You fool, you think that you can touch me with this? You couldn't handle my gifts with your greedy little mind. I, I should say, too, I want to pause there because he said no lights, no camera, no sound because all of those things were inventions by Thomas, and, Thomas Edison. Uh, the incandescent light bulb was perfected by him. Um, uh, the phonograph, which gave us sound, and then the, the first uh, video camera. What's inside mine was ahead of its own time. You did not steal from me, you stole me from mankind. It's a wireless transmission of truth, and it's a shocking real story of a bank of you. And if the people knew you stopped me from making power free, they would curse the Con Edison with every utility. Oh. Yeah, so, uh, you know, Tesla did invent wireless electricity, you know, the Tesla coil and all that kind of stuff. And uh, a lot of our inventions even today go back to things that Tesla uh, originally uh, was able to come up with. I have to wonder if Tesla had gotten the financial backing to really do some things, what he might have come up with. But um, let me know your thoughts about all that. Again, I probably missed some things. I'm not real deeply familiar with their story, only things I've read and, and watched over time. But I definitely know that uh, Tesla got royally screwed by thomas edison um and he eventually uh ends up giving up his patent to ac electricity i think to george westinghouse uh so that westinghouse could successfully compete uh against the dc power uh so let me know your thoughts if you'd hit that like button subscribe so you never miss another video i greatly appreciate that check out some of the links in the description below we'll see you again soon thanks for watching